windows or outside walls, all right? Uh, we could have some isolated tornadoes across the area, which we'll be watching along with those high wind gusts. Roof damage, tile damage, but if you're a kid at home, there's a lot of kids staying up saying, wow, I've never seen anything like this. Try not to be, it's nothing to be scared about as long as you're hunkered down, okay? As long as you're inside a sturdy structure, uh, but if you're in a mobile home, you need to leave immediately, okay, in an evacuation zone or not, okay, because those mobile homes have damage at winds of 50 to 60 miles per hour. We're talking winds of, what, 80 to 100 miles per hour, so keep that in mind uh, if you're in a mobile home. Uh, as we take a look at the very latest on Futurecast on Saturday morning, things will start to improve slowly. All right, so we could still have some damaging winds, especially in our southeast Georgia counties, uh, Camden, Glynn County, uh, maybe even Nassau County first thing in the morning as this just continues to skirt the coast and then slowly uh, move out uh, to the north northeast. Now, big things here. We talked about the storm surge. It looks like the worst of that again for Duval between four and eight. We're going to go county by county on those wind speeds coming up and then we're going to zoom in with that storm surge and flood graphics. We've got some graphics that will help you out and keep you safe. So just stay with us. Uh, we'll be with you here until we can give the all clear through Saturday morning. Jeannie Keitha. All right, thanks very much. I'm looking on Twitter and someone just posted people taking this hurricane as a joke. Just because it hasn't hit you doesn't mean it won't. It isn't affecting others. So um, I, I know I've covered some of the storms and you have too over the years. And right. there was a few people that say, oh, you guys are making too big a deal of it. But you know, it's not worth a chance. And all the science is right now saying that this is going to be very rough. Yeah. We're in it for the long haul, folks. We're here with you. And to give you a look at how things are in Brunswick right now, we're going to turn things over to Monica Garcia. Hey there, downtown St. Simons Island, where I can tell you there are a total of three people out here on Mallory Street. That's myself, my photographer, Jeff Renfro, and a police officer right here from Glynn County Police Department. Uh, what are you doing right now? You said that you just started your shift 9 p.m. And what have they have you uh, been out doing tonight? Basically, we're just patrolling the area, making sure that people are following the curfew if they chose not to leave. Um, we're just ensuring the safety of everybody. That's right, because the curfew started at, was enforced at midnight, and it's yes. going to be happening through 9 a.m. Now, you did say that you have already driven down toward the coast, because we're about two blocks away from the pier, and you said you saw the, the swell or the, the surge heading up. What did you see? I saw waves um, coming up on the embankment and it was coming in pretty rough. Wow, pretty damaged. Have, uh, so now you said that you've been part of the police department for eight years. Have you ever seen anything like that in this particular area? No, I have not. Okay, how does that make you feel? Um, I've been through it before. I was in the military before in Key West in 92. So I've kind of been through this thing before. She's not afraid of anything. Okay, now I feel safe being out here. Okay, well, thank you very much, and thank you for letting us stay. So we are out here. We're the only news crew. Uh, enjoy your night uh, out here as of yet, but just kind of give you an idea. Just look behind me. Now, I did ask her about those surges because we're not testing our luck. We're not going to get too close to the pier. We've been warned, you know, hey, if you want to stay out here in St. Simons Island, just stay away. So we're about two blocks away from the pier. St. Simons Pier, that's been closed down. It's been closed six, since 6 a.m. this morning, but I can tell you uh, two concerns that people are um, worried about ahead of Hurricane Matthew. First is the surges, those surges that could possibly get anywhere between six to nine feet high. They say if those surges do get high, that's going to lead to the causeway to shut down and pretty much blocking access to St. Simons Island altogether. The second thing are provisions, and I want to turn the camera around this way. Yesterday in the gas station right underneath that stoplight, you can't see it, it's closed down. They were the only place open, which is pretty shocking because this is uh, typically filled with a lot of people, a lot of tourists and a lot of restaurants and places to eat, places to grab food and water. Well, at this point, if we stayed here, myself and uh, Jeff Renfro, my photographer, we wouldn't have anywhere to uh, to, uh, you know, go grab food, to, you know, drink water. So that's the second concern that people are dealing with. But we are out here and we'll keep you more, uh, we'll keep you posted as we learn more information from St. Simons Island. Monica Garcia, First Coast News. Thank you so much, Monica. And St. Simons is so gorgeous. It's one of my favorite places, that whole area, the Golden Isles mm -hmm. in the world. When I was a little girl, we used to vacation there from Aww. Missouri. And those big, beautiful oak trees, let's just hope that the majestic oaks stay up. <laughs> exactly. that's, that's one thing on my worry list. Hey, let's go out now to Jacksonville Beach. Yeah, that's where we find uh, Lewis Turner and Katie Jeffries that we know the winds are really whipping out there. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. How are you guys doing in there? It's pretty windy out here at the moment, but as we were saying, this is nothing compared to what it's going to be like. Certainly. Well, okay, so we're uh, 
somewhat protected right now by uh, the condos on First Street. That's where we are, First Street. You heard the report there from St. Simons where there was only three people uh, in town. And uh, that was Monica, the photographer. Well, uh, that's about like it is here with us, too. Katie, myself, Evan, who's with us, rolling the, the, the camera. I'm trying my best to protect the microphone because yeah. I know it's got to be so loud, so windy in there. Uh, Jack's Beach deserted. And the way it should be right now, I know the, the message from Jack's Beach and, and uh, authorities has uh, kind of changed. Uh, changed from that of get the heck out, now to hunker down. And we have seen, I mean, the power is still on here at the moment. We've seen some lights in some of the homes, uh, some of the high rises here. But of course, it's hunkered down at this point. You cannot just drive out in this weather. Uh, we're staying in one of these high rises because that's the only safe place we felt we could be if we were out here. I want you to bear with me for a second. I want Evan to bear with me as well, just for a second, because I, I brought the, uh, the old portable anemometer and the wind gauge. And I'm going to kind of walk away just a bit. And, and if the wind is overwhelming in the microphone, just kind of bear with me. I'm just going to get a reading, and I'm going to uh, kind of come from around the condo and into the, what more or less what we call a, a wind tunnel. So just kind of... So right now, uh, it's actually... You're thinking, oh wait, I really want to hear what they have to say, but if you're like us, we couldn't quite hear you. And, and they may not be able to hear me, but let me give it a try. Hey, Katie, can you hear me? No, they can't. I could not hear the wind no, speed, could no. you? But it's okay, we'll be able to uh, you check could, back in with them a little bit. It oh, was 30 wait. miles Our per hour. Did catch it. Our director, Rabbit okay. Lisa, 30 miles, 30 an, miles hour. per hour. And you heard Katie mention, it's going to get even worse, oh, four this times is, as worse possibly. Yeah, this is nothing there. compared to what this is going to turn out to be. And we want to tell you though, because I see these comments like, what about their safety out there? Um, our news director has said those, that crew right there, well, Lou and Katie, yeah, they're not going <laughs> to leave them there past any dangerous point, so don't worry about that. Yeah, and if you're worried about us, don't be as well. We're going to be at FS. CJ, we do have a backup plan. If yeah. things, you know, go haywire here, yeah. we'll be moving as well. But and we'll then, stay with you on air, though, and online. That's right. By haywire, if the surge downtown, we are right across from the river, right by the baseball stadium, across from the Jaguar Stadium, and we're very carefully monitoring this. If the water surge becomes too much, we have plans, and we have a studio all ready to go, like mm -hmm. you say, at FSCJ and yeah. the Deerwood campus, so we'll still be able to broadcast, and we'll just move everybody over there. Not going to take any chances. That's you don't right. either, okay? All right, we're going to take a break and be right back. All right, folks, if you're just now joining us, here's what you need to know about Hurricane Matthew. JSO is no longer urging people to evacuate. The message now is to stay where you are and hunker down. Do not travel. Stay home. And this massive storm is expected to pass very close to our first coast. It's Friday right now, so later on today as a Category 3 storm. So how big is the storm? We want to show you this picture. If you've seen it before, it still is worth looking at again because this is 500 miles wide. That's about the same distance as between Tampa and New Orleans. But once again, if you have not evacuated, they really want you to stay put. We just saw at the beaches. I mean, look at that with Lou and, Ke and uh, Katie out there. It is so windy already. It's just not safe to be what driving. What was it, 30 around. miles an hour out there? And, that, and that's really nothing them. compared yeah. to what it's going to be. They said that could quadruple exactly. by the time this is all over. All right, we want to take a look at some video we're seeing as the storm moves up the Florida coast. This is video from West Palm. You can see wind just whipping through the trees. There it is, and the rain just really pouring down. And the streets, yes, yeah, you can imagine, they are flooded. They should have taken those hanging baskets down before the storm, <laughs> right? Try to move that stuff out of your area. This is from Stewart, Florida. This is north of there, closer to Port St. Lucie. Things look a bit more serious there. They have high winds. They have everything boarded up, though, so that's positive. All right, and let's take you out now to Jensen Beach near that same area. Utility companies around the state are reporting 105,000 people without power. That's farther to our south, but we just checked with JEA, and right now that agency is reporting just over 100 customers without power. So as you can see, the crews are really hustling to restore power to folks. Let's go over to Lindsay Boach right now in our weather center. And Lindsay, let me ask you this. Um, during the night, let's say somebody's watching, but they're getting a little sleepy. Mm -hmm. Can they just go to sleep and relax? And at what time would you 
would want to wake up and keep your eye on this? Yeah, I would wake up uh, probably about uh, maybe 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock uh, tomorrow morning. We know that people want to get some sleep. We don't want you to be, uh, uh, I mean, if you can stay up, you need to stay up. You want to stay up, then more power to you. But uh, uh, we're, we're, we're getting some new numbers in, Jeannie. I actually was just downgraded to a Category 3 hurricane, still a major hurricane, uh, but now the winds are at 120 miles per hour. Still 120 miles per hour, moving to the northwest at about 14 miles per hour. So we just got this update at 2 o'clock. So these are new numbers for you this morning. Uh, 3 o'clock, or excuse me, uh, by 8 o'clock, we're starting to see it get a little bit closer to the Space Coast, but still hugging the coast. The potential for that eye to, uh, to hit the state of Florida is still there, but most of the models have it just hugging the coast. So now a category three by the time we get to eight o'clock tomorrow morning, uh, that's when we're looking at uh, again wind speeds of 125 miles per hour. So maybe even a little bit more than we're sitting right now because we're at 120 right now. Uh, by the time we get to Friday PM, that's when we're seeing it directly the eye of the storm directly in line with Jacksonville and then moving up the coast into Camden and Glen counties. By the time we get to Saturday 8 AM, we're looking at a category two storm and then swinging back around potentially. We'll worry about all of that once we get through the next few days. So again, been downgraded to a category three storm. We'll be tweeting out a picture of that track as well. Here's a look at the radar showing you exactly where these showers are, where these storms are starting to come in or these these uh, big bands of rain, I guess, are coming in. We've taken live shots from St. Augustine where Shelby is. You saw the rain there. Now we're starting to get the heavier amounts of rain moving into Jacksonville, into Clay County, now into Bradford County and almost into Union and Baker County, seeing some into Nassau and Fernandina Beach and then up towards Camden County and Glen County. You'll start to see those showers as well. Expanding this picture out showing you this massive storm. We still have a long way to go, folks, and we are here for you. We will be with you every step of the way. Here's the eye right now. The strongest winds are circled around the eye. The uh, most severe weather is going to be right about in this area, that front right quadrant that we always talk about. Uh, so the good news is, if there is any good news with this, uh, we are on the left side of this storm as it comes a little bit closer to us. So uh, we'll talk about storm surge because we just made some new maps about that. We've had a lot of folks asking about storm surge in their particular areas, when it's going to peak, how long it's going to stick around. Uh, we'll talk about all of that coming up a little bit later on. We're still kind of tweaking some of those graphics, uh, but we've got a few of them uh, for you. Uh, let's go to um, meteorologist Mike Prangley. He's got a little bit more. Mike, what do you got for us? Yeah. Now, uh, as this storm continues to move to the north, okay, so the latest advisory uh, category three uh, hurricane, not surprising because we're seeing that eye wall and the eye reorganize, okay, so. Uh, with that said, uh, we'll continue to watch those wind speeds, but at this point we continue to hunker down and watch and the storm surge forecast is a big thing folks have been asking about. So Flagler County usually is this this uh, eye comes closer to you. It's the closest approach. So I'm thinking this afternoon by uh, if you look at the water levels they're already starting to come up in Flagler County and you're going to see that storm surge between one and five o'clock start to peak. OK, and then once that water comes up, it stays up. It takes a while to drain up. Uh, we're talking about a couple of days of very high water. So if you're in Flagler County, you see the red area and this is pretty amazing here. As we zoom in, we're talking about storm surges on order of about eight feet farther up the coast. Of course, we're watching St. John's County. Uh, we're watching areas along the river in Putnam County, Clay County. Now in Clay County, uh, more closer to the two to four foot range, but notice uh, Clay County uh, and Palaka area, uh, you've got some surges close to six feet. So if you're in a flood zone uh, there, keep that in mind. And then along the coast, here we go, St. Augustine, St. Johns County, you've got oranges and reds, and it seems like these storm surges keep coming higher and higher. Uh, we're talking about you being in the six to nine foot uh, range here and even 10 feet where you see some of the deeper colors, and that includes areas of Crescent Beach, 
uh, Butler Beach, uh, watching these areas for some very high storm tides. And as uh, Lynn's doing a good job, there's marine land right there. So you see the real deeper reds and oranges, the marine land area, Palm Coast area. Uh, those areas are in that uh, 9 to 12 foot storm surge. Uh, as we head into and for St. John's County, uh, likely peaking out between two and six o'clock. OK, so you see how that time and as farther south you go early afternoon and then mid to late afternoon for St. John's County. Then we just keep going up the coast mid to late afternoon uh, for Duval County. So we've got these beautiful beaches that I also, also love dearly. So again, I'm I'm hoping the uh, the worst continues to wobble a little farther to the east, but these beaches are going to take a pounding uh, likely with storm surges of at least uh, nine feet. All right, as we go into two to six o'clock, that includes Michler's Landing, Ponte Vedra Beach, up to Jacksonville Beach, Neptune and Atlantic Beach we're watching. Then you go up to Mayport and then beautiful Amelia Island, one of my favorite places. Uh, unfortunately, you've got deeper red coloring. So here, so a storm surge would go from about nine feet to the south end of the island to about 12 feet at the north end of the island. And then we go toward the St. Mary's River, Camden Glen County. And this is something that surprises people. Look at the storm surge even as you go well inland. You've got the deep oranges and reds. Uh, so there, you're, you're talking six to nine feet there. And this is well inland. So right along the St. Mary's, if you're in the flood zone, you got to get out there and notice just uh, up toward Kingsland. Uh, got all these tributaries and the, the uh, 10, 9, 10 foot range, and that extends along the St. Mary's and then up toward Camden and Glen County. So uh, we've been told, telling our friends in Georgia, uh, beautiful Georgia on my mind tonight that uh, if you're in a flood zone and you evacuated, you need to get out and uh, again, the emergency management did a good job. I think getting that point across and then this map does a, a pretty good job to see, you know, some of the highest storm surges from this storm will be in southeast Georgia in Camden and Clinton County and along the St. Mary's River. So this map does a good job showing that as we go areas along the St. John's. Uh, let's go downtown Lindsay. I think uh, the downtown area. Uh, we were talking about some storm surges on order, of possibly six feet or greater. But as we look to a Dames Point Bridge, there's that six to eight feet. And then coming downtown here, uh, closer to the station, there will be some areas of uh, water over six feet as well uh, here in downtown. You know, you've got the greens here, four to six, and there will be some pockets of six to eight. And as we go down the St. John's River, uh, we're watching areas like Mandarin, okay? Uh, off San Jose, there's that line. Here's your San Jose Boulevard in Duval County. And at this time, I like to see greens rather than those deep red colors. So this would keep your uh, storm surge closer to the four uh, to six foot level. OK, so that's some good news there. But again, with that said, four to six, we won't say that's really good news, but at least it's lower. Uh, but that's enough to cause some major flooding as well. Uh, so we'll continue to zoom around neighborhood by neighborhood and help you out where you live with these storm surge graphics. One thing's for sure, uh, it's 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 good that the evacuation orders were issued and, and, and folks hopefully uh, listened uh, with all these high numbers coming in and the worst of the surge hits by mid to late afternoon. All right, thank you very much. Mike always explains everything so well, easy yeah. to understand. Um, I was talking with a lady named Melody at mm -hmm. the Wind Dixie. Um, she was buying all this stuff. This was yesterday and she looked at me and I said, well, how are you doing? She goes, should I stay? Or should I go? And I thought, man, that echoes everybody's concern. We know now how many people have decided to go into shelters in Duval County. According to the Red Cross, there are 2,000 people in shelters. And I heard a reporter ask at EOC earlier today, gee, there were actually a couple hundred thousand people in the evacuation zones. Doesn't that concern you that there are only 2,000 in the shelters? And they said, well, not really, because they know a lot of people have already left right. um, to go to friends or family or to go out of town. Um, but they said earlier about 2.30 this afternoon, and we've mm -hmm. not heard an updated figure that only about 30 percent of the beaches had evacuated and wow. that number is low. Yeah, yeah, that definitely is. Um, speaking of uh, the centers, though, we do want to mention that the Legend Center is at capacity, one of the evacuation sites that was mentioned, but there's still plenty of uh, evacuation centers still open here in Jacksonville and throughout the First Coast. We have a complete list for you on our website. That's firstcoastnews.com. But right now, though, we want to check in with Shelby Danielson. She is live in St. Augustine with the fire chief there, uh, Carlos Avalis. Shelby. Yes, and uh, Chief Avalis has been great. He's been working with us for, for several hours since yesterday afternoon. He's been going out and warning people of the catastrophic impact that they're expecting here in St. Augustine. And Chief Avalis has been with the St. Augustine uh, Fire Department for over a decade. But get this, he's been the fire chief for a month now. His first day as fire chief here was when Hermine hit. And now he is dealing uh, with Matthew heading our way, and he's doing a great job. He's joining us live now. And uh, Chief Avalis, why don't you just give us the latest update from your firehouse uh, what your plan of action is right now? Well, uh, I can tell you that late uh, this past evening, we basically had our 
sort of last supper together and finalized our evacuation uh, of the fire department here for St. Augustine. We're planning on leaving at some point early this morning. So I think we're inside of the six hour window for us to evacuate the city limits and start heading west. Now, yesterday you had already told us that if you hadn't left yet, you know, it's almost too late. But you mentioned that 6 a.m. today, Friday morning, would be really the last cutoff time. Do you still feel that way or do you think people at this point it's just too late to leave? At, at this point, I think it's too late. There, I mean, there's we can't make any more preparations at this point. And uh, I mean, I'm glad that it was downgraded to a category three, but that's a very small bit of good news for us. If we're Looking at a nine foot storm surge, that is, it will still be extremely devastating to this community. Now, yesterday you mentioned that you didn't believe anyone in St. Augustine, any living person or in this county, had ever seen a storm of this magnitude. Uh, maybe you can expand on that. We've had hurricanes in the past, but you don't think, you think this is unprecedented? Absolutely. I, it 100% is. I, in driving around and talking to folks and trying to get them to leave, I, I stopped and talked to a woman this afternoon who was adamant about staying and I did everything I could to try to convince her to go. She kept telling me that you know she had been in that house for 109 years or that the house had been here for 109 years, it hadn't gone anywhere. That, but I, what I kept trying to echo to her is we haven't seen anything like this in 109 years. We haven't seen anything like this ever. I mean, that has to worry you because, you know, they feel so connected to their homes. We've spoken with people who are just wanting to stay in those homes who, you know, they've been here for over 100 years, but can those homes hold up in this? Yeah, we're, we're about to find out. Mm -hmm. Now, you went around yesterday and you were literally walking up to anyone you saw around St. Augustine, telling them, asking them why they were here, telling them to leave. What was the overall response that you got back from those people you encountered? I think most heeded the warnings. Um, there are a few out there that, that continue to want to ride this out, and I can't tell you why uh, for the life of me. I don't know what rock you're hiding under. I don't know what you think this is going to be like. And uh, later on in that during the day, I kept getting more feedback in terms of we don't think it will be that bad. And I've told everybody the same thing. I said, I will gladly give you my contact information and email. And I said, if you want to send me hate mail for making you leave, I said, then that's fine, because when it's all said and done, you're going to have the opportunity to do that. If you don't heed these warnings and you get caught out in what we think will be a terrible storm, you know, I may never hear from you again. So we're doing everything that we can at this point. Preparations are done. There's nothing else we can do to stop this from coming. We are expecting this to be a, uh, a, a very defining moment in St. Augustine's history. So all of our efforts now into are to conserve our personnel, our equipment, our resources, and then get organized so that we can figure out a plan to reestablish services as quickly as possible. Now, uh, before I turn things over to Jeannie and Keitha to get the, uh, some of their questions, I wanted to ask, we're right next to the marina here in St. Augustine, and there's still big boats out there. I mean, what kind of hazard does that pose? Do you, I mean, were people asked to remove their boats? Well, what we're dealing with, I can tell you that all of the boats that are in the marina are unoccupied. Unfortunately, several of those boats have owners that are out of state, so there, there is nothing that we can do about that. As long as there's nobody on them, that, that's our primary concern. We're all about life safety at this point and doing whatever we can uh, to, to conserve that. So they're there. This is, just, like I said, we're, we're, we're dealing with it, so. Mm -hmm. Well, I believe it's Jeannie and Keitha on the desk, and if you guys can uh, can still hear me, do you guys have any questions? He can hear you if you want to ask Chief Aviles, Aviles any questions right now. Thanks for that, Shelby. I just heard from him. I, you seem really emotional, emotional and passionate about this, even to hear that you were knocking on people's doors trying to make sure that they get out of their homes. Uh, there was a mandatory evacuation. Obviously, folks are, did not listen. Some did not. What message would you want to hammer home right now to the residents who are are at home in their houses watching this. Get ready. Um, realistically, this is going to be bad. Uh, I know that those of you that are that have chosen to stay home and ride this out think that you have an expectation of what this is going to be like. I believe that you're underestimating how bad this is going to be, and you need to be prepared to ride this out on your own for. An, we don't know how long. I don't know how long or how quickly I will be able to send folks back in here to to help you out. 
So Chief Avalese, this did is Did you guys Jeannie, have any other questions I, for him? We did, thank you very much, Shelby. Chief Avalese, when you said, um, will we be able to withstand this? And Shelby asked you, will the homes make it through? And you say, we are about to see. I could hear everybody in the studio go, oh, because we really like the way you're so direct. I mean, you say mm -hmm. people haven't evacuated what rock have they been hiding under. Right. Um, we all love St. Augustine. I got married in St. Augustine. I love it down there. But if you could please walk us through a nine foot storm surge. A lot of people know St. Augustine well geographically um, in the historic areas. Can you walk us through what you anticipate that being? It's, it's really hard to fathom right now. You gotta think it's a nine foot storm surge. If we end up getting 10 to 12 inches of rain, that's on top of the storm surge. We have a five foot high tide today at somewhere between one and 2 p.m. And then we have wave action on top of that. This is, that's why I, I try to, it's hard for me to visualize what that's even going to look like. Um, but, it, that, and I, I'll tell you the emotional attachment to this is I, I feel that. I mean, mm -hmm. I live, breathe, and eat St. Augustine. This, this is my watch. This is our city, and uh, we know this is a resilient city, and we have some of the greatest people anywhere. So, my guys are ready to do everything that they can, and you know, but we're we're about to really be put to the test in a way that we never have been before. Yeah, and I really do feel his emotion, too, because I said we got married there. Our first date right. was there. I mean, every time I have a chance, I have any free time, I always get in the car and go down to St. Augustine, Anastasia Island, and mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sentimental about it, too. So, of course, people are the most important, but there are beautiful things there, too. Chief, I want to make sure I heard you clearly. Did you say at some point this morning you yourself are going to leave as well as the, the fire department? Is that correct? Is that what I heard? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so this is going to be unprecedented, but we're looking at uh, somewhere inside of the next four to six hours, you will see a convoy of all of my fire apparatus and firefighters leaving the city limits to wow. seek higher ground and shelter. Chief Avalese, let me ask you this. Um, how do you decide? You said you'll stay as long as you can. What factors will make you say, okay, guys, we are leaving now? Uh, we have policies in place for that. As of right now, I can tell you that we're, our cutoff point is that 50 to 60 mile an hour uh, wind range. So we are looking at uh, when we, at 39 miles an hour, we know that the bridges will be closed. We know that we've already had to secure utilities and water to the barrier islands. And that's, I, I know folks are asking about that. I wanna reiterate the message that that is in an effort to preserve critical infrastructure that is not uh, that, that, that's, that was the, why we made that decision. Um, so we know that the bridges will be closed soon and we have to, that's our cutoff point. Uh, anytime we hit sustained winds over 55 or 60 miles an hour, it becomes unsafe for us to operate our vehicles on the road. Well, Chief Avalis, we really appreciate uh, what you're saying. Thank you for being just so gut honest about this. And Shelby yeah. Danison, we appreciate what you're doing and to all the first responders out there, um, we don't want to put your lives in danger because that's what you do every day is put right. your own lives in danger to protect us. But boy, that, that just really gave me. It hit home. Yeah. I mean, I know this is serious, but uh, listening to him, that really gives you pause. Definitely. We're going to head out to another area right now that's not just seeing rain, but a lot of wind. Uh, Lewis Turner and Katie Jeffries, they are at Jacksonville Beach. They